A very good morning and suki huntu to our brothers and sisters in the Dhamma, sponsors, donors, supporters, and family members who are joining us virtually for the ropes offering ceremony here at BGF in conjunction with the month-long Katina season, a season of giving and generosity. Before we begin, let us pay respect to the members of the Sangha. Let us now put our palms together to invite the BGF EXCO members to make offerings to the Buddha. As we offer flowers at the sacred feet of the Master, let us reflect. Today, these flowers are fresh and sweetly blooming, but soon they will be faded and fallen. Like flowers, our bodies too will fade and one day pass away. As we offer light before the Master, let us reflect. He dispels the darkness of ignorance with His wisdom light. And from His greater lamp, we light within us a lesser lamp, so that the light of Bodhi may shine within our hearts. As we offer incense in reverence of the Master, let us reflect. The air is sweet with the fragrance of incense, but far sweeter than incense is the pure life whose fragrance spreads in all directions throughout the world. Brothers and sisters in the Dhamma, we are gathered here today with five distinguished venerables who will represent the order of the Mahasangha at the Ropes Offering Ceremony and the Sangika Dana. Let us put our palms together to welcome Venerable B. Sri Saranankara Nayaka Mahathera, Chief High Priest Judiciary of Malaysia and Chief Monk of the Sri Lanka Buddhist Temple, Sentul, Venerable Nyaninda, Venerable Dhammarakita, Venerable Maitri, and Venerable Damiko. We are very grateful and honoured to have Venerables here today at BGF despite the COVID-19 situation. To the audience at home, we would like to seek your forgiveness for not being able to host you physically at the centre today in compliance to the SOPs. Thank you for your understanding. We shall begin the event today with Dhamma sharing, followed by Puja and chanting, the ropes offering ceremony, blessings and sharing of merits, and the event will be concluded with the Sangika Dana. Let us now begin with the Dhamma sharing session. This morning, we're very happy to have Brother Tichi Singh, the President of the Buddhist Gem Fellowship, here with us today. So as we know, today's ropes offering ceremony is done in conjunction with the Katina season, a season of giving, a season of generosity. And it is also a very important event celebrated by Buddhists all over the world. So Brother Chi Singh, aside from Katina, what are the other significant Buddhist events in the Buddhist calendar? Thank you very much, Sister Kohoi. Yep. Uh, before I start, I'd like to thank all the devotees and uh, contributors for your support on today's event, BGF uh, Rope Offering event, okay, which is very important to all Buddhists. Uh, Buddhist ceremony, normally the main one will be the Vesa. Okay? Vesa day, or sometimes being called the Buddha's day, is always uh, fall on the full moon day of the month of May. This is where uh, Buddhists all over the world will celebrate in, uh, in commemorate with the birth, the enlightenment, as well as the passing away of the Buddha. Then after the Buddha enlightenment, okay, he will spend almost about uh, seven weeks, remember, seven weeks in uh, different places in uh, Bogaya. Okay? And after that, he realized that he needed to share the Dharma. So he went all the way to preach uh, the five friends monk. That is where the Buddhists will celebrate Aosaha. It's also called the Dharma days. And this fall on the full moon day of somewhere in July. This is where the first preaching of the Dharma to the five the first five disciples 
okay, in Deer Park, Isipatana. And moving on, after this day, until three months later on, that is where a uh, Buddhist monk will actually observe the rainy day retreat. Uh, that's called the Vasa. So the Sangha member are required uh, to observe the Vasana. So during that time, they will be engaging uh, in intensive uh, meditation uh, and other spiritual pursuit. At the end of October, okay, so the Vasa end, and the Buddhists will celebrate Pavarana. Okay, and that is the day to, uh, to mark the end of uh, Vasa. Okay. So from there onwards, uh, temples all over the places, they have a month to celebrate Katina. Okay. So Katina Day, which means that the offering of a special rope or Katina Shivara, okay, prepared and presented to the monk okay, who have completed the three months reigning retreats. So this is where the whole process, uh, the whole ceremony of Katina uh, in relation to the, uh, the, the Buddhist ceremony. So Brother Chi Singh, could you elaborate further on the significance of Katina itself? Basically, Katina uh, means the unshakable okay, in the definition. Okay? There are two meanings over here. The first one is uh, Katina actually basically means the wooden, wooden frame. This is used during the Buddha's time. Uh, for sewing the double uh, uh, layered ropes together. So that is a frame. So the second meaning of katina basically means uh, hard, firm, and solid. That is the characteristics of the monk. Okay. In the process of katina, okay, uh, first of all, the, in the morning, uh, in the early morning, uh, devotees will carry the katina cloth around the temple. Okay. This is the first process that early morning they will, they will wake up, they will carry, they will go around the temple. After they're going around the temple for three rounds, okay, then they will offer they will offer the katina cloth. Remember here, it's a katina cloth, not katina rope yet. It's a cloth, it's a white cloth normally. Okay. They will offer it to the Mahasankha. Okay. Then later on, the monks, the Mahasankha will take the white cloth and they will dye. They will dye the katina cloth to the color. It so depends on the culture and the tradition of the, the, the monastery. And you can see over here that the uh, monks are putting in the, the saffron material, dyeing uh, elements over here. And you can see that they are soaking in the hot water. Okay. So once the uh, katina cloth has been coloured into the, the colour they want, okay, and that is where uh, devotees sometimes will help to dry them, right? they will dry it. Yeah, so ensure that it's dry before, before the cloth, the katina cloth being cut okay, to make the katina rope. Okay. So all this uh, in uh, uh, Buddhist culture is where the monk have to do it. Uh. The monk will, will be measuring the uh, katina cloth and then they will cut and then they will sew them together in either 5, 7, 9 or 11 groups or, or we call it aggregates or kanda. Okay. The design of this uh, cut, uh, the monk's rope are actually based on the Magadha uh, rice paddy field. So once the uh, dyeing process and uh, drying process completed, then they will sew them together in this uh, to make the final product called the katina rope. Normally, after this Mahasanghika dana, okay, devotees will re-offer now the katina rope to the Mahasankha, and this will be done in the Sima Hall. Basically, a Sima Hall is a chapter house okay, or the ordination hall. Okay. It's very important uh, uh, facility to cater for the monastery uh, function. Uh, normally, uh, the high ordination of a bhikkhu, uh, a bhikkhu ceremony, the Upa Sampada will be, must be held in the Sima Hall. And Katina, the offering of uh, ropes to the Sangha, must be uh, offered in the, in the Sima Hall. And every fourth nightly, Okay. The assembly of the Buddhist monk together, they will reaffirm the rules of the dis uh, discipline. Okay. It, it will be carried out in the Sima Hall. 
So Sima Hall must consist of, uh, uh, be, will be normally surrounded by nine Sima stones. Okay, normally you can see that there are some Sima stone around the temple, uh, around the, the, the hall. Okay, normally eight of them is outside and one is inside there. If you visit Uwa Chetawan in PJ, you can see that there, the, the, there's a Sima stone outside. Okay. Finally, in the, uh, the final process of the Katina rope offering in the Sima Hall is where the Mahasangha will present the Katina rope to the worthy recipient. Okay, and, and the recipient are the ones who, who have been uh, uh, observing the, the three-month Vasa and the most worthy one to be the recipient of the Katina rope. Okay, and you can see that this is the uh, summary of the whole offering process. Thank you very much, Brother Ji Singh, for giving us a comprehensive view of the Katina ceremony. But today at BGF, we will be conducting the Ropes Offering Ceremony. And to explain the significance of the ceremony, we are very happy to have Datuk Sri Dr. Victor Wee, yeah. the immediate past president of the Buddhist Gem Fellowship. Yeah. So Datuk Sri, why do we as lay devotees need to offer ropes and requisites to the Sangha? Yeah. Well, actually, Brother Chi Singh has given a very good explanation of the Katina ceremony. And uh, during the Buddhist time, uh, the monks and the nuns are from the Sramana tradition. So they wander around living on arms and uh, the, the, the food and shelter and the clothing are all are being given by the laity. And um, because in India you have the rainy season for three months, uh, the Buddha have encouraged the monks to go on the Vasa, which is the retreat. And after the retreat is the offering of the laity uh, to the members of the Sangha. This is in, ex in order to establish a symbiotic relationship. Because as um, uh, advised by the Buddha in the Sigalavada Sutta, uh, it is the duty of the laity to give material support uh, to our religious teachers uh, and also for the religious teachers uh, in order to teach the Dhamma, in order to lead the laity on the right path. So the, this becomes an opportunity for us uh, to give an offering to establish that relationship to say, yes, we support you, Bhante, you know, for all the services that you are giving to us, your religious services, and this is our support uh, for, the, for the members of the Sangha. In the, in the case of uh, BGF, uh, BGF, we do not have monks in residence. So we have this ropes offering ceremony, and BGF is almost providing the opportunity for teachers to appear. And you could see that BGF is very active in our, um, on, on internet, giving various types of teaching to the people. So this is a way of telling the laity, of laity also giving support to the organization that has been bringing Dhamma to you. So this is the expanded version of why we have the rope offering ceremony. Indeed, Dr. Sri, as lay devotees, it is our duty to support the Sangha who has um, given us guidance on walking the path of the Dhamma. And so as lay devotees, what are the benefits for us in offering ropes and requisites to the Sangha? Offering ropes and requisites to the Sangha is the way that we make merits. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the Sikaluvada Sutta, the, but the Buddha has also given advice uh, to somebody by the name of Digajanu. Uh, what are the th contributions, what are the things that can give rise to happiness after we leave this life? And the Buddha said, number one is uh, sadda, strong faith in the Buddha Dhamma. Number two is the practice of sila, uh, which is our morality. Third is chaga, which is generosity. And fourth is panya. So if you had to practice these four qualities, we would not have no fear about what is our next destination after this life. So you can see the word chaga here is the giving. Uh, the Buddha also has mentioned that when the house is burning, whatever is saved from the house, things that you can bring out of the house, that will be with you after the house burns down with all the property. And what are the things that we save by bringing out from the burning house? It is the acts of good karma. It is a charity that we perform. So the opportunity of, uh, of doing rope offering ceremony is we're making a huge store of merits for ourselves and our loved ones. And these are the things that will determine our next destination. Yes, and we would like to thank our uh, sponsors and, and donors who are here virtually with us today as well for participating in this meritorious event. So with that said, 
what should be our frame of mind as we you know, make offerings to the Sangha? Yes. In order to make this um, action more impactful, more uh, meritorious. Yes. Yeah. There are many levels of action. Some actions we can just perform with our body, but our heart and mind is not together with the actions. Now, when we perform something really significant, like the offering of, uh, uh, you know, of robes, it is, um, uh, we must do it connected with our heart and mind. And the process of giving is that we have before, during and after. Now before that, when you begin to hear announcements that, oh, BGF, you have rope offering ceremony, and you say, oh yeah, I would actually like to participate in this rope offering ceremony because I've also benefited from a lot of programs that is being run by BGF. So the joy arises in the, in the, in the mind, in the heart, and you sign up uh, for the ropes offering ceremony. So that's the first part. So, you know, you, with that kind of joy and happiness that you actually want to participate in this rope offering ceremony. Then now, today we have the rope offering ceremony. Obviously, because of the SOP, unfortunately, uh, you can only join us virtually. But we have um, representatives who will offer on your behalf. So when the offering is made, just rejoice with, with the offering. Because some of you are doing this in dedication for in memory of your loved ones who have actually passed away. And sometimes prayers for the well-being and happiness of your own family. And also for yourself, for your own spiritual path. So when this offering is made, just rejoice again. Be with, be with the process. Make some kind of aspirations in your heart. And after the process is over, we will have the Maha Sangikadana also rejoice that today has been really an auspicious day in which we participate in the rope offering ceremony in Bija. So this is uh, before, during and after and make some strong aspiration because we actually caught up in this sangsara. We would like in our process of traveling within this sangsara to meet with good teachers, with good friends and to be able to learn the Dharma, to deepen our knowledge and understanding of Dharma so that one day we may gain release. And the performance of merits like this are the ones that will support us towards, uh, towards that goal. Thank you very much again, Dr. Sri, for um, this uh, very beneficial advice. Once the ropes and requisites are being offered, how will they actually um, benefit the Sangha and the community at large? Okay, um, firstly, we have obtained the, the ropes from other centres. And by getting these ropes from them, we are also making some kind of contribution. So they also benefit from the, the fact that we have this rope offering ceremony. The ropes and the ounce bowls are not really for our use because these are items to be used for the members of the Sangha. So as, um, these ropes, and uh, because there are many centers that are not so well supported, uh, not only in this country, but sometimes overseas. So these ropes and bowls will be sent to centers uh, you know, to uh, various temples uh, which are not so well supported so that uh, the monks uh, would be able to have ropes uh, you know, that is uh, from, from Malaysia. So, uh, so your contribution will actually uh, uh, be distributed uh, to other centers to benefit other members of the Sangha. So I would like to thank all of you for your very kind contribution and for participating in this ropes offering ceremony at Pichu. <laughs> Sanghang Sarenang Gatchami Brothers and sisters in the Dhamma, it is now time for the offering of ropes and requisites to the order of the Maha Sangha. We invite everyone at home to observe the ceremony mindfully and calmly with your family members and friends. We will be calling out the names of the sponsors and donors as our representatives offer the ropes and requisites to the Maha Sangha on your behalf. As we call out your names, do recollect the wholesome deeds and actions which you and your family have performed in the past and present. Through these merits, may we be met with the right conditions to sustain our practice of generosity virtue, and cultivation of the mind. May we have the opportunity to learn, practice, and realize the Dhamma 
until final liberation is attained. Wong Ki Lem and family. Sandra Lao Sui Yen. During the offering, let us recite together Imang Sangha Sadema, which means these are offerings to the Sangha. And we'd like to invite Group 3 to pass the requisites. Representatives, kindly take a position. Once again, to our brothers and sisters, donors and sponsors who have joined us online, we would like the audience members to repeat the words Imang Sangha Sadema before each offering, which means this is the offering to the Maha Sangha. Right, we shall uh, proceed with the first round of the offering of ropes. So let us have this understanding and the right intention in our minds and in our hearts as we make offerings to the Maha Sangha during the ropes offering ceremony as well as the Sangika Dana. And as we chant in the Sangha Vandana, the Sangha of the Blessed One's disciples is fit for gifts, fit for hospitality, fit for offerings, and fit for reverential salutation as the incomparable field of merit for the world. So let us rejoice in the good actions which you have done and aspire to do more to support and sustain the Buddha Sasana and to cultivate ourselves in the process for the happiness of oneself and others. For those who might not know, the Platinum Package offered today consists of the eight requisites for the Sangha, namely the upper rope, the lower rope, the outer rope, a belt, an arms bowl, a razor for shaving, a needle for mending clothes, and a water strainer. The ropes-only package consists of ropes and a belt. Let us recite. Imang Sangha Sadema. Let us bow three times. What makes a Sangika Dana so powerful and so meritorious? is because these offerings we make today are dedicated to the order of the Mahasangha in its entirety. We dedicate these offerings to the Sangha members across all monasteries, all countries, across all time periods, across world cycles, in the entire cosmos for their guidance and contribution in sustaining and prolonging the Buddha Sasana so that more beings can come to taste the fruit of the Dhamma and to realize the ultimate truth, each for themselves. And for us, the laity, dana or almsgiving is the first of the ten perfections or paramis. According to the Anguttara Nikaya 457, the benefits accrued are the fourfold blessings of long life, good appearance, happiness, and strength. As mentioned by Dato Sri earlier, after the ceremony today, the ropes and requisites will be donated to other temples and monasteries in Malaysia. And any surplus will be distributed to monasteries outside of Malaysia to benefit the Sangha communities overseas. 
the next round of offering. Ropes offering is done on behalf of KH Chow and family. Ong Hui Tzu and Ong Hui De, in memory of Lin Pei Ho, Erin Lee SB, and Lu. Sohi. Once again, we would like to thank our sponsors and donors for your contribution to the Ropes and Requisite Offering and Sangika Dana. May these merits be a condition for the attainment of Nibbana. We are also very glad to announce that this year's response is a lot better than the past years, and we rejoice in everyone's contribution. From the list of sponsors, we can see that many of you are supporters and participants in our Dhamma Dutta activities and program. We thank you for your continuous support as this enables BGF to continue running these activities for the benefit of the community and for the preservation of the sasana. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Let us recite together. Imang Sangha Sadema. Bhavetu Sambhu Mangalam Rakankantu Sambhu Devata Sambhu Buddha Nubhavene Sada Sudhanti Just timelessness 